So this here is Cedric. He came up to greet me after giving my talk on 20 years of lithium battery fire experience. Uh, partly because he has a lithium battery from us and it's installed on a totally out of left field application that I absolutely love to see. Um, so what Cedric found is that the bicycle paths up the Sunshine Coast where he lives were not being maintained at all by the municipality and getting swept clean and just wanted to solve that problem. And rather than dealing with the, how expensive were they for the a commercial sweeper? A dedicated bike lane sweeper truck can be about $200,000. $200,000. Uh, and so he thought he could surely do better than this and conceived and built from scratch a bike sweep that's powered entirely by electric bicycle battery and is towed by a bicycle. Okay, I just did a bunch of sweeping. It was not that long actually. And there you go. This is the kind of debris that we're getting here. So if you look at this machine here, it actually, it's, just, it's a sight to behold in its simplicity and beauty. Uh, the bicycle here has a simple wireless button. You simply push the button to spin it. As you're biking down the path, that blows all the debris, all the leaves, all the rocks, all the grime off the bicycle lane. Uh, you said that the ideal traveling speed is about 15 to 20 kilometers an hour, and you don't even need an e-bike to pull that uh, in flat terrain, uh, but no doubt it would be the perfect combination with an electric bike to just bring citizen control over cleaning the bike paths or give progressive municipalities an option to solve this problem without investing in $200,000 commercial machinery. Now it's ready for its maiden voyage. So I'll turn on the batteries here. And here we go, let's see if it works. So tell me a little bit about how you actually conceived this idea and specifically how you designed, built, or sourced all the parts. Because this is not something where there's just an off-the-shelf, clean-my-lane hardware supply shop. The origin of it is that there's a, a group on the Sunshine Coast where is they organize volunteers to sweep sections of bike lane to advocate for more maintenance of bike lanes. And I was at these events and I was sweeping by hand and I was like, surely there's a better way to do this. So I started to think about ways of having a powered brush on a bike and I, I started thinking about a trailer with a brush and I googled the idea and I found a guy in California who's called Pierre Lermont and he had already prototyped the idea, he had sort of been a proof of concept bike lane sweeper and I'm a mechanical engineer so I contacted him and offered my to help with uh, design and, and manufacturing and he was super keen so now we're working together and uh, I'm, I'm starting to build these for him and helping with improving the design and so this is the latest and greatest prototype. I just built this a few days ago. When you say you built it, what, what does that entail? Did you do all the metal work? Did you do yeah. all? Yeah, so I, like I did the full 3D design as a mechanical engineer, but I also welded the frame. So I, I just learned with like YouTube videos and uh, buying a secondhand welder how to weld aluminum. Um, and then I just sourced the brush locally. It's a custom made brush from a manufacturer in Vancouver and the battery is from Grin, and uh, the, the motor which is integrated into the brush core right at the end, mm -hmm. that motor is actually a, an electric scooter hub motor, and, um, and it works really well. Uh, tell me about the actual control, because here you've got just a simple on-off push button, as straightforward as you could get. What are you doing to actually link the, uh, the drive, and what is your motor controller inside that? Right. So the, the controller is actually the, the controller that comes with the motor, the, the scooter hub uh, motor. And we considered using a Grin controller, but it was a little bit overkill for, for what we needed. So we went with what the, the motor manufacturer offered. And the, the on-off switch simply controls this little um, radio frequency uh, like relay switch to control a circuit that's uh, related to the throttle of the controller. Mm -hmm. So by... by a throttle. Yeah, exactly, like opening and closing that. Yeah. And that just controls the brush turning on and off. And that's all you need for the sweeper, just on and off, right? So. And do you have some special attachment to a bike frame, or how are you actually doing the link to the, to the, to the bicycle mount? Yeah, it's a standard uh, bike trailer connection. It's a burly bike trailer hitch. So, yeah, it's easy to just connect onto pretty much any bike. Okay. And then can you tell me, does this actually push the bike, or does it pull the bike backwards as you're trying to ride with the thing spinning behind you? It pulls the bike back, uh, so it's a bit of resistance. Like, the brush counter rotates, and the brush is on an angle to push all the debris to the side. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it's a little bit of added work, but it's honestly not hard to pull. Like it's lightweight, it's not that much resistance. 
And you don't mind putting a bunch of volunteer jobs out of business in the Sunshine Coast? What's going to happen to all those sweepers? Yeah. And it's kind of awkward. I've been showing up at these volunteer events with the sweeper, and like I'm basically way more effective than like 20 people, <laughs> and I'm one person with a bike. So that's pretty awesome. But you know, it's kind of like a, a happy, sad thing where there's just an evolution of a better way of doing things. And like they're advocating for more bike maintenance. So this is what this enables. So I think I think at the end of the day, everybody's happy. And where do you see, like, this is obviously what looks to be, I mean, I would look at this and think it's a commercial-ready product. Nothing about it looks hacked together in a garage. The enclosure, the cover that you have for the motor controller electronics is great. The brush is completely professional. Um, is, this, is this at a point where you're looking for sales or you're trying to reach out to, to is, it, is it municipalities directly or is it people just do-gooders in their local community just trying to keep the lanes clean? What is the direction you see your next set of customers for this? Right, so the previous prototypes were a lot more janky with like some plywood and stuff. This one, I've made a lot of effort into trying to make it more like a product, like productizing it. So the idea is to be able to sell this mm -hmm. and we're, we're exploring how that'll work, like reaching out to municipalities and seeing if they'll buy them. It might also be a sort of a contracted thing where we'd offer it as a service. We're just exploring all of that right now. There's also some some uh, nonprofit um, bike advocacy groups that are that are using them. So there's actually a group in Portland called Bike Loud that's been using one of these sweepers for a few months, and they love it, and they want more of them, and their feedback has been super helpful. But yeah, so it's basically like all of the above can use it, volunteers and municipalities. But for sure. Um, there's no doubt that uh, if municipalities could buy them, like you know, that would help us be be able to sell them for a better price and make more of them. So volunteers tend to not have as much money as municipalities. And, and bringing products to market is that something that you have experience with? I see you've got Lao Bikes as a brand, and there's more stuff on display here. Yeah, um, yeah so we have a little bit of experience with bringing products to market. This this uh, mountain bike has a new kind of drivetrain called the Supra Drive, and it solves the problem of derailers breaking on mountain bikes. I had an idea that was about four or five years ago to how to reinvent the derailleur. And uh, re yeah, I revealed that two years ago. I moved to BC, started Loud Bikes as a company. I have one employee now, and we're making these drivetrain parts and selling them to a German bike company. This bike company designed this frame for the drivetrain. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to get some experience with selling things. Yeah. It's been a big learning curve. Yeah. Can I ask how old you are? 29. 29, way to go. Uh, and then. <laughs> it was an accident, but I stumbled into running a business when I was around 25. 25. Yeah, okay. not not knowing what I was getting into. Um, but yeah, why don't we actually just have a look at the bike itself? Because I think it's the most brilliantly ingenious uh, modification to a drivetrain that I've ever seen. And I, I wasn't tuned into the bike community when this sort of break news a couple of years ago. But uh, why don't you explain for the camera what exactly uh, yeah, so, is different here? So normally, um, I'll hold it. So norm normally with mountain bike uh, derailers, you have a chain tensioner that dangles down here and tensions the chain and I mean any derailers not just mountain bike derailers but that's especially a problem for mountain bikes because the derailleur gets smashed by rocks it's quite vulnerable when it's hanging down there so I had the idea of relocating the tensioner arm of the derailleur from here to to here sorry um, so this right here is the chain tensioner arm you can see I can actuate it so that's the chain tensioner and the derailleur has only one pulley instead of two and it just makes the derailleur quite compact and far from the ground I've essentially decoupled the two functions of the derailleur and so that the drill is protected. So is, is Lal your last name? Where does that come from? No, so Lal is the, the, well, the beginning of the last name of the guy who invented the bicycle. Invented the bicycle? The bicycle, yeah. Because way back in the day, people, adults would cruise around on push bikes, just like kids these days. And that's what they had at the time. And um, then Pierre Larlemont, uh, he had the idea of putting a pedal crank on the front wheel of these push bikes, these adult push bikes. And it, be, it became effectively a bicycle because you're cycling the, the crank. and. and and so but that was the first instance of human pedaling to drive a vehicle of any kind? Yeah, well, I don't know of any kind, but I know that for that form of like two-wheeled vehicle, like yeah. that's when it became a bicycle. So I named the company after the inventor of the bicycle, the owner of past inventor, you know? Yeah, or of the pedal, yeah. the pedal crank. The, yeah, yeah, I guess you could yeah. say that. Yeah, and then uh, the Bike Lane Sweeper project, we have a, a website specifically for that. It's bikelanesweeper.com. And Loud Bikes for the mountain bike side of things, it's loudbikes.com. Yeah, thank you, Justin. Normally, this would be a two hand operation. It's one bin. Second bin, the one on the outside is usually, or I guess on the inside, is usually less full. Pretty awesome. <laughs> 